Hi, I'm John Olson. Welcome to Next Stop from a destination we just can't get enough of. Welcome back to Oregon's beautiful Mount Hood territory where there truly are a hundred ways to play and play is exactly what we'll do on this episode. We'll play in a corn maze and a pumpkin patch in wine country. We'll talk local brews and art and we'll feature a couple local businesses with stories that will warm your heart. All this and so much more on Next Stop from Oregon's Mount Hood territory. The fun starts now. We're in Malala, Oregon today, not that far out of Portland, but in the beautiful, serene destination <laughs> to learn about alpacas at Markham Hill Ranch. And who better than Jennifer to tell us about these beautiful animals? This is a working alpaca yeah, but it's ranch. Yeah, good work. It's tell us about work. what it takes. A lot of animal husbandry, so we're taking care of them. We're trimming toenails. We trim top knots. That's the top of their head. You get what you get, what you hear. But invariably, we'll get your hands on some babies. Um, you may be able to weigh, help us weigh an animal or trim toenails or something like that. Well, I'm ready to help you. Okay. And right. I promise I won't get scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it depends on which animal I put you with. <laughs> Ooh, the challenge no. is on. Okay, okay, time to clip some toenails. The way we hold them is that you put your hand right there on the top. He has four legs. If I pick one up, he can't kick. This is a spa day at the alpaca ranch. It is. You yeah. mentioned you could tell that there might be a pregnant one. Yeah, oh, a spit test. Ooh. Spit test. Spit test. Okay, you got She's her to spit. spit. <laughs> Okay, walk on out with her. Come on, baby. Take She's spitting. <laughs> she wants nothing to do with him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my girl that spit today. Uh huh. Is she pregnant? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We did that just. You kind of set it up, didn't you? Well, <laughs> yeah, but I could have gotten one really nasty. Thank you for not doing that. Yeah. Oh, but really, I, you guys, yeah. it's it's this is yeah. a business. Yes. It's very And it's soft. all about the fiber. It's about the fiber. I'm gonna go talk to Bill about fiber. Bill, my man, I understand that you are the fiber king. <laughs> so you can probably sure go fiber that, 901, but, but okay. I think I probably need to start at fiber 101. Okay, fine. Tell us about the fiber. Yeah, absolutely. The big thing with alpaca fiber is it's hypoallergenic. I was wondering, I, I have allergies, and when okay. I was handling the alpacas today, Didn't I, bother you I've had no problems. Yeah, that's why. You see the reflective quality of that yeah. fiber? Yeah. Um, that actually will show up in a finished product. So you're, you were a judge, you're not judging anymore, right? No, I retired. Now, obviously you have, there's awards given out. Mm -hmm. All your walls are just loaded with awards. What's, what's going on there? Did well, you guys win all those? All we this? did. One of the things I don't know if Jennifer mentioned or not, but alpaca comes in 22 natural colors. So these are woven, but this is, that rug right there is all natural. How about this land around you? Just describe what it's like to live out here. Oh, it's great. There's a lot of freedom. Um, it's quiet. Uh, there's space to do what you want to do. And then when we want to go into the city, we can go into the city, but we can come back out and kind of retreat back out here. Arts of all shapes and sizes is alive and well in Lake Oswego, a beautiful community just a few minutes south of Portland. Today we explore the Gallery Without Walls, an award-winning community art program. This is super cool. Tell us about this concept. The Gallery Without Walls program started about 16 years ago and is a program where we offer public art on the streets of Lake Oswego that everybody can enjoy all year round. So I know that this was done by a 12-year-old. Yes. It's just a wee lad. That's amazing to me in itself, but this has more meaning, right? Yes, um, it really is amazing. Um, we have about 75 submissions to our rotating Gallery Without Walls program a year. So for one of the 15 to be a, a sculptor that's only 12 years old is really special. That's awesome. Now you, you have a little bit of a walking tour for us today, right? We this, do. This is amazing, but I, I, I want to see more. Yeah, let's go see some other things. 
Now, is this supposed to be on the tour or is this just super cool? No, this is one of the pieces on our tour. This is a great piece by Yelena Roslaya and it's interactive. So you play the holes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And these are actually based on African Udu drums and the artist is really interested in visualizing sound waves. So rumor has it that you guys get a little bit of rain. Sometimes. <laughs> Just a little bit of rain here in Oregon. All the art is specially coated if it needs to be to protect from the outdoor elements and all will hold up. The rumor has it you guys have a gallery with walls. We do, we do. We have a fantastic indoor museum and gallery space. So let's head there. What are your favorites in here? Well, luckily enough, this show, Plen Air, was juried. First prize right here we have is by Randall David Tipton, and it's of a local scene, Iron Mountain. Next to it, we have our third place winner. Um, it's pastel, and when you get up close to it, it's really interesting to see the amazing variation. Okay, so Lake Oswego is also known for its lake. Right. There is a lake here. There exactly. Lake. But we haven't seen the lake. Well, let's go see it. Thank you for bringing me to the lake. <laughs> you finally get to see it. I finally get to see it, but I, I like this. As you can see, it is a sunflower. It's made of stainless steel, and the petals are aluminum. They're coated aluminum. It's kind of this um, recycled piece, and then this brand new shiny stainless steel sunflower for us here in Lake Oswego. It's so special for this community, what you guys are doing, and we certainly appreciate the art. We appreciate you for your time today, but you know what else? We like you. <laughs> Great to you. meet you. You too. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Coming up, we attend a couple fall festival favorites involving pumpkins and apples. We're at Leopold Farms in Boring, Oregon for an anything but boring fall festival. Let's start with the pumpkins, because that's kind of why we're here, but there's way more going on with the pumpkins than just the pumpkins. That's right. So let's start with the pumpkins. Kids come here. They come out and they get to choose their favorite uh, ones, some orange, some green, and some warty ones. And then they take them in and weigh them, and then they take them home to carve them. And this is truly a family-run business. you got I've all hands on deck. Um, it actually takes our whole family to put it together. My nieces, nephews, my sisters all come out. Our kids all have a part of it. Uh, they work, we really work hard to put on a grid event for people to come to. There's more than just pumpkins going on here. I saw the Burgerville truck here. How's, how's Burgerville here? Burgerville's here because they, uh, we partner with them to supply all their berries. We're here in the pumpkins right now, and they're in all shapes and sizes, which is really cool. <laughs> but that corn maze is just calling me. I went to Nebraska where the corn huskers uh -huh. is just calling me. Uh -huh. Can you take me in the corn maze? I can, but I'm worried about those white shoes. They're not going to be the same. Can you do it? What's a little dirt? What's a little mud? That's farm fun. And here's the mud. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of corn here. There's a lot of corn. What kind of corn are we talking? This is feeder corn for cows. It's uh, pretty starchy, you wouldn't want to eat it. It's not sweet at all, but it's good and tall. Well, That's why we like eat. it. Cows need to eat too. That's right. So they're very happy because it's starchy. Whoop. Well, obviously the public is out in swarms today. This is so much fun for families. I see families, kids right here in front of us. This is just like heaven for them. There's so much going on here. This is like a festival for the eyes. Kids are having a blast. Parents are, everybody's smiling. Mm -hmm. That's gotta be fun for you guys. Out of farming, it is the most fun and I love it even when school buses come and all of the kids are so happy to be here and get a pumpkin. It is a good place. This is fun farming. And they get to play in the mud. Definitely. <laughs> in, in your mind, doing this for 16 years now, mm -hmm. what's the highlight for you and what do you want the public to take away? I think that we've really tried to grow it into a great family fun center to come and be with uh, your family and friends and just to have a good time. I was out of town, so unfortunately I had to miss it, but my crew didn't. The annual Philip Foster Farm Cider Squeeze.
We call it the Philip Foster Cider Squeeze. It started actually with some of the early members of the Home Orchard Society getting together and making cider and selling it. And the main part of the event is that anybody can bring in apples and make their own cider. Well, as you're grinding your apples, you're gonna grind up about a box full of apples per gallon of cider that you wanna squeeze. You grind up those apples, and then the cider press squeezes them down so we can um, get all that juice out. And then the, the juice all runs into a bucket and you can pour the bucket into your jugs and haul the jugs home with you. We have a lot of, of different vendors and different reenactors in historical costume that are here to explain about the history and to give people a hands-on experience. So you can build with a log cabin, you can grind corn, you can use a crosscut saw, and uh, you can play in our little log cabins and, and uh, see what it would be like to be a pioneer. Generally anything that would be done here um, would be a lot of farm tool equipment, repair, repairing wagon wheels, um, forging anything that they would need. A lot of the people, it's their favorite place to come because things get hot and people get to hit it with a hammer. It gives, I think, people a lot of resilience to know that you can live without all of the mechanical structures that we have in place now. We brought a couple of engines down here. Uh, what you see in the background, these are all gasoline engines. The way that you hear them running, um, you'll hear them bark, and then you'll hear them freewheel, and it's re referred to as a hit and miss. They were used on the farms, such as the one that we're on, uh, prior to electricity. Here at the Philip Foster Farm, we like to say that you can get your hands on history. And that's really the difference between us and a lot of the other museums, is that we really allow people to have a hands on experience and get close to the history. We are only 45 minutes from Portland, and a lot of people come out here and are surprised that they didn't know we were here. We're a very well kept secret. We'd like to invite our neighbors to come on out and see what it's like. Up next on Next Stop, we feature two local businesses with great stories. We love a great story and that's exactly what you'll find at Bob's Red Mill, a local company way ahead of its time. Bob's Red Mill has the widest variety of grain products of any milling company in the whole world. We use all these grains and seeds and beans and nuts to create 370 different products. So I want to talk about this funny looking stick. Hmm, what is that thing? Well, the story of this funny stick started uh, several years ago when Bob's Red Mill entered the World Porridge Making Contest over in Scotland. And, ta-da! Two Saturdays ago, Bob Moore put the golden spurtle back in uh, Bob's Red Mill. There you go, look at that. Winning. Two Saturdays ago. We're so proud of Bob. But let's go ahead and start looking at some of the machines, all right? Well, we're standing here in the historical equipment display, and these are some of the actual mills that Bob used when he first started the company 38 years ago. How did Bob get into this? Like, what made him get into milling? Charlie. His Bob wife. is always very quick to give credit for our company to his wife, Charlie. Now, Charlie was a young wife and mother back in the 1950s, and she took the responsibility of feeding their three little boys very seriously. Charlie loved natural foods. Bob loved finding old pieces of equipment, taking them apart, figuring out how they worked, and getting some more use out of them. It was Bob's love of old machines and Charlie's love of natural foods that came together when they discovered these old-fashioned stone mills. People want to eat healthy. They're, they're looking for a healthy lifestyle, and so they begin to look for products that will bring them that kind of uh, vigor and that kind of health. Now, I drove by the other day another location that was very red, very white. That's our company store. 
you thought that you had a lot of Bob's Red Mill products in your home grocery store, wait till you see my store. We have everything there and in every size that we make it. Um, we also have a great restaurant there. So anybody that's uh, here in Portland, come over to our whole grain store, get a wonderful breakfast, lunch. Um, we have amazing uh, restaurant there. I'm staying at the Sandys of Time beautiful bed and breakfast, and it's not Sands of Time, it's Sandys of Time, which I just clarified. Now, if you look up the definition of labor of love in the dictionary, I think you find Sandys of Time. This is, was a true labor of love. Al, you made promises to your wife. Tell us how this I did. Started. I did. Well, we, uh, we were looking for a property for a bed and breakfast for several years. And we kind of made a hobby out of it. We would drive around and look at properties, and there was always a problem with uh, it was too far out, wrong location, too much money. But then this one came along, and uh, right when I saw it, I knew that uh, I wanted to get into this and redo it, refurbish it, and uh, have a bed and breakfast here. So what were you thinking? Besides shaking your head. Yeah, honestly, I was expecting so much more. He was so excited about the property, I couldn't wait to see it. And he brought me up and around the driveway, and I just thought, it's the Bates Hotel. I thought, it was, <laughs> I thought I'm going in there and never coming out again. <laughs> it was just really, it was scary. You're fortunate enough to have somebody who actually grew up in this house, right? Nancy Hersey, yes. Um, she was the youngest daughter of Harvey Starkweather, the man that built the house. It's been very um, helpful to know you know, the rooms that we've designated as certain things were actually what happened in the house before we knew it. Well, this is a perfect time for you to describe the rooms. Well, the first room is the secret garden room, and it's a, it's a two-room bedroom attached to a bathroom, and that was the nursery. And then the next room was Hugh Starkweather's bedroom, one of the men, one of the boys. And uh, the next bedroom, the summer garden, was, we believe, um, Alice Starkweather's bedroom. And then the large winter garden suite was Harvey Starkweather's bedroom. We got the two stories done, the bedrooms upstairs and then this floor. And I wasn't going to do anything with the basement. But then I got to thinking, you know, if I don't do it now, I'll probably never do it. Uh, we put in a large theater room. So we made use of all the square footage down there, which was a couple thousand square feet. There's also one piece of furniture in this house that is absolutely my favorite piece in the house, and that's your stove. Oh, oh, I know, I love my stove. I mean, almost I bought the house so I could have that stove. <laughs> I had to promise her that stove. You've done it now, you have a successful bed and breakfast. Would you do it again? Definitely. Oh, absolutely. I love it so it much fun. now. I just love walking around outside in the morning. It's gorgeous out there. Please do join us for our next segment a beer and wine tour on bikes with some great friends. Today's gonna to be an awesome day. I get to start out at a local Oregon City brewery with some of my close friends, and then we're gonna head out into Oregon wine country on bikes. Hey, John, good to see you again. Tommy, what's up, my buddy? Karen, this is gonna be an awesome day. Heather, awesome to see you again. And Ryan. What's up, buddy? Uh, the coin toss, actually a historical event, uh, happened in 1845 uh, here in Oregon City. And there were two pioneers who lived here in Oregon City. Uh, Petty Grove, who was from Portland, Maine, and Lovejoy, who was from Boston, Massachusetts. And each one of them had an equal amount of land claim. It was 50-50 in this land that would eventually become Portland. Each one wanted to name it after his hometown. Petty Grove wanted to call it Portland. Lovejoy wanted to call it Boston. But since it was a 50-50 split, how do you do that? Toss a coin. So this is the 1845. I like this. And the secret ingredient in that beer is molasses. Okay, so Tom. Yep. What's on the agenda? We're gonna go wine tastings. We've got a little bit of a five mile bike ride trying to give you a chance to clear the palate. We'll end up at a winery called Via Catalana Cellars. And from there we've got about a mile to the other winery we'll go to, which is King's Raven. Like a perfect afternoon. This is really cool, man. It's gotta be the most unique winery I've ever been to. It was a lot of work. My <laughs> wife and I actually designed all of this. We used all unskilled labor with ourselves and other workers, and our idea was to make it look like it was 900 years old and that it was built by peasants. 
Petit Syrah actually is um, pretty rare in the Northwest because it's a hard grape to grow here. It's well, the last to ripen and the clusters are really small and tight. This is like the most versatile wine we have. It's good over ice cream, yeah. vanilla yeah, cheesecake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you can mix a little bit with an oil and vinegar salad dressing. I mean, this goes on and on what you can do with it. Where's next? Next stop is King's Raven, about a mile up the hill. What are you drinking, girls? Uh, the Foch. <laughs> the Foch. We're one of the few truly estate wineries, so um, not only family operated, but we grow all the grapes ourselves right here. Um, yeah, there's no Cabernet, no Syrah, but comparable wines. This wine it was named after a very famous French winemaker, and it's a French-American hybrid. It, uh, it's a very smooth character with a little bit of a raspberry strawberry finish. This is our 16th vintage. So we're, we've really just been bootstrapping this, but yeah, we hear that all the time. We drove right by <laughs> and we've been driving by for years and we didn't even know you were here. We found you and I'm glad we did. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks you guys. Thanks for tuning in to this special episode of Next Stop from Oregon's stunning Mount Hood territory. And thanks to friends, old and new, who helped make this show a success, especially you, Heather. It's so awesome to work with you again. You look great. You too. It's been a long time and you haven't aged one bit. You see the eye roll? <laughs> and a special thanks to our Oregon's Mount Hood territory. They've been a fantastic sponsor. They always are. And what about Mount Hood territory? Yeah. All the treats that you didn't even know existed in Absolutely. your own backyard. I've been a native Oregonian and had no idea these these places existed, so. Well, there's actually over 100 ways to play, okay. and we're just skimming the surface. Next stop, where will we take you next? Make good memories, everybody. He is a 12-year-old sculptor who Still hails. Lad. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> You're a little bit loud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> No, I said, oh, we lad. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were saying, oh, you guys are super loud. loud. Oh, okay. No, I'm we screaming. got our first blooper up. Okay. <laughs> you're super loud. No, and a special thanks to our sponsor, Oregon's Mountain Territories. <laughs>